I think I have to believe if, if he could have, if he'd have killed her, he'd have killed himself right then because he didn't want to live, you know. He'd gotten in shape where he's miserable. Just a miserable hang, what he was. Why do you think alcohol and drugs play such an important role in the country music business? Well, I, honestly, uh, I didn't notice that it was uh, any more rampant among us guys than it was everybody else. It was uh, just a phase that people were going through. Uh, it seems like the people in the country music industry received the most publicity, I think. If it wasn't really hard drinking at first, I don't think it was really hard for drinking. It just didn't eat very much. I think it's well known worldwide that uh, Hank had a drinking problem. Uh, uh, Hank wasn't a, a drunk. Uh, Hank was an alcoholic, and there is a difference. Uh, Hank would go for months at a time and never take a drink. He wouldn't take a drink uh, with his best friend. Playing a concert someplace or another, and we'd all get together after a show, maybe at the hotel room or someplace, you know, Hank would buy the booze, and he'd say, uh, boys, there it is, y'all uh, drink it up, but you know what would happen to me. So he would sit there and drink a, a Coca-Cola. And I know of all the times that I've seen him, and I saw him a lot of times, I'll promise you this, and I'm telling you the truth, I never saw him drink, never. In the last couple of years, they, he, you know, they had to put him in the hospital to sober him up. But he hurt no one except himself with it. We're in most of the Grand Ole Opry artists and performers of that day that we knew uh, over a period of time drank much more than Hank Williams did, but, but they handled it most of the time. Some of them had problems with it too, but, but uh, most of those man. artists uh, survived it and managed to handle it. But they were drinking much more consistently and much more frequently every day, and Hank could not do that. If Hank Williams had succumbed to drinking every day, he'd have never succeeded in the business. He wouldn't have been unable he to couldn't write perform, or perform. And he couldn't, couldn't write music. He couldn't do anything. He, he couldn't do anything constructive when he was drinking. Uh, Don and I have been amused at some of the uh, later and recent years prototypes who compared themselves to Hank Williams as a writer, and, and they would be, uh, well, I wrote that when I was drunk because I had that old feeling that Hank Williams did. And untrue, when Hank Williams was drunk, he, he could... Didn't... He couldn't, he couldn't write, write a nursery rhyme, you know. He couldn't write his name, very likely. One day, while talking to a friend of mine, a friend that drank lots of whiskey and wine, and I finally asked him, do you believe in God? He shook his head with a crossways nod. Then why don't you trust him and believe on his son? Well, man, he answered, I'm just having fun. Well, I drink and I curse like some people from church, and I'm not any better. I'm not any worse. Well, I tried my best to get him to see why Jesus died for him and for me. He said, let's have a drink and let's have some fun. I don't care a thing about God's only son. And he left me there on the side of the street, walking away on unsteady feet. And you know, I thought I'd fail to get him to see why Jesus died for him and for me. But then I knew I'd planted a seed. God gives the increase, so i had done the right deed. You know, the next week at church, I saw that same man and he was listening to word. God's great plan. And when at the end of the sermon he was the first one to stand, and before everybody, he raised up his hand. He said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. I accept Jesus Christ. That was nailed on the tree. Oh, thank you for the one that saved me. I just had to throw that in. Well, he loved Alder better than anything in the world, but they're both, you know, he's making so much money and all, you know, but money don't take the place of love, you know. Daddy 
probably felt pressure at times. And I know that uh, everybody wants to say that mother is the one that put all the pressure on him. But an alcoholic will use anything as an excuse to drink if, when they want to drink. Mother, I'm sure, put pressure on him. I'm not, I'm not saying she didn't because she did try to keep him straight and keep him going and, and you know, so that he could, he could be what she thought or that he had the potential to be. But I don't think that she was ruthless in any way because she really loved Daddy. She really cared about him. And people want to say that she wanted to be a star. She really didn't care where he was a star enough. She really wanted to be the star, and that's not so. Uh, mother's first concern was Daddy. Now, when he left Mother and they got a divorce, he was drunk almost the whole year he was gone. You can only push anyone as much as they would like to be pushed. Uh, many people perceive support as push. Audrey was very supportive of Hank, just as my mother was supportive of Hank. And uh, both Audrey and my mother were very strong women, but I would not say that they completely domineered his life. Hank was not such a weakling that uh, that he could be pushed all that much. I talked with him uh, over there in the room as friend to friend, and uh, I said, Hank, you're 28 years old, and uh, uh, of the 10 top tunes last week and the week before, six of them were yours. Uh, but uh, unless you stop this drinking, you know, how long can you hold the pace? And he said, well, uh, uh, how many fellas do you know uh, that's making $250,000 a year, 28 years old? I said, that isn't the point. <laughs> I said, uh, how much could you be making when you're 50 years old, you know, with your talent? There have been people who feel that they have tapped the universal mind, that uh, they have been able to tap. Uh, I think Willie Nelson talks about that in his book, Willie. Uh, and if anyone ever channeled music, and that's what you're talking about, Hank certainly did, because he saw a song in everything. I'm a songwriter, and I'm supposed to be able to write down what I'm feeling. And uh, that's just what a songwriter does. And he may subconsciously or intentionally put himself through different things to be able to write about them. Uh, I won't mention any names, but a country singer, writer, one of the legends of our time, uh, his manager used to cause a lot of friction between him and his wife, so this guy would go somewhere and write sad songs. When, you, when you're dealing with the real serious blues type, it's generally, a, you know, shade of uh, human human hope and he has some songs in which there is none you know and I have a couple in which there's none I have some songs I have a couple songs a few songs that I don't even play but I wrote them and I've played them once and I've recorded them you know and other than that unless it's real late at night and uh, I've been on the road for a real long time. I just don't play them because uh, they're just nobody needs to hear the blues that bad, <laughs> you know. I play them at mental hospitals. They go over big there. Well, sometimes I don't know where this dirty road is taking me. Sometimes I can't even see the reason why I guess I keep a gambling Lots of booze and lots of rambling Or it's easier than just a waiting around to die One time friends I had a mall I even had a paw He beat her with a belt once cause she cried told him to take care of me, headed down to Tennessee. Oh, it's easier than just a waiting around to die. I 
come age and I found a girl in a Tuscaloosa bar. She cleaned me out and hit it on the slide. Well, I tried to kill the pain, bought some wine and hopped a train. Easier than just a waiting around to die. And a friend said he knew where some easy money was. We robbed a man, and brother, did we fly? The posse caught up with me, drug me back to Muskogee. It's two long years just a waiting round to die. Oh, but now I'm out of prison. I got me a friend at last. He don't drink or steal or cheat or lie. Well, his name's Codeine. He's the nicest thing I've seen. And together we're gonna wait around and die. All together we're gonna wait around and die. He said, hey, listen to this. Hear that lonesome whistle blow. How you like that? I said, Hank, that's the worst sounding thing I ever heard. Don Helms was standing there and he laughed and he said, I wish you, I'm glad you told him that. So he's been singing that, that, that line all night long. Hear that lonesome whistle blow. I said, I wish you'd write another line for it. We didn't appreciate the fact that that would probably be the most beautiful thing that Hank Williams wrote. Good guy, good music. Influence to the whole thing. Herb, take this Hello? ball, will you? Hello? <laughs> Fabulous songwriter. Fabulous songwriter. Yeah. Great singer, great stylist. And he kind of paved the way for a lot of songwriters of today, country music. That's what, it from me. What do you think makes him so special? Well, he was a, kind of an innovator. Help us out. Come on, Raymond. He, Jump in here. That's you. He, he did. Look at this man. He lived, he lived a lot of... Of course, I'm not giving my age away here, but but I was Nobody starting back during the, during the time. Yeah. Hank lived a lot of the songs that he wrote, yes. and I think I think the songs that uh, that are legendary today came from an experience. To paraphrase uh, uh, Mel Tillis, another famous songwriter, that that most of the songs that are that have been here for a while and probably stay a long time were. It was something that happened sometime in life. And I think it was no different with Hank Williams. He lived a lot of that. And he made most the sad songs. Well, some I'm sad th songs yeah. and some uh, spiritually uplifting songs. I saw the light. But he left us Hank Jr. Think about that. Well, oops, okay. Okay. Think about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, gee, look at the time. <laughs> check. Check, check. Check, check. Uh,